the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited and elated to be here. I missed out last Sunday because I was out ministering and I I'm, feel good to be back. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. At Oak Street. Amen. 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 What day is this? This is the day that the Lord has made. And what shall we do? Rejoice Let's do our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I was glad when they sent unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day thy course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, I had loved the habitation, the place where your honor dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sings praises. This morning's opening hymn is 394. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Some disguise and howling tempests often succeed bright sunshine. In the land of perfect day, when the best is rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Without any brother line, let him sing this hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
some tests? Anybody had some drama this week? Anybody had to share a couple tears this week? God said you will understand it better by and by. If you believe that, just put your hands together and say, we'll understand it better by and by. invocation by brother Calvin he will come forth and lead us in our prayer of invocation uh, he's going to come and have a little talk with Jesus on our behalf this morning and then after that brother Eric will come and do our scripture reading amen amen pray brother Calvin first, first, first coming to you father just thank you for being you Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for bringing me down to, to worship this morning. Father God, I come to you with a humble heart this morning. Father God, I visit some friends in the hospital. The, the husband, um, a good friend of mine, um, had a couple seizures and some respiration. Then I, then I found out yesterday that his wife also was not doing good. So Father God, I want to see them. I, I did what I could do because I'm not good at doing those things. But Father God, I talk to them and let them know that they're in God's hands now. Yeah. So whatever God decides, what he will decide. Amen. Ask you for the head of protection Amen. around them, hold them in your heavenly arms, and take care of them. Father God, I just, I just thank you for all you do in my life. Now, Father God, I ask you to be with all of us and help us all. Because as you know, throughout the world, there's all kinds of trouble going around. There's all kinds of things happening in each and every state. The children going wild and shooting each other and killing each other and fires and, and all kinds of wars around this world. So, Father God, I ask you that you be with them and help them. Remember that you should treat your neighbor as you treat yourself. It's the first thing they should think of. So, Father God, all this war and all this, all the troubles are going around the world are kind of difficult nowadays. But, Father God, we ask you to be with us and help us in all we do. This I pray in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
you are able to mourn her. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Be glad. We're going to rejoice and be glad. And I'm going to be reading the scripture this morning. It's coming out of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. And I'm reading from the NIV version. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And who all have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, <laughs> sin is lawlessness. Do Jesus. <laughs> but you know that he appeared so that we might take away, that he may take away our sins. Yeah. yeah. And in him is no sin. Mm. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to oh, sin Jesus. has either seen him mm. or known him. Verse 7. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, mm. just as he is righteous. Amen. From all that dwells. to it. You shall love your neighbor. I say you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to you. Do we have any first time visitors here at the Oak Street rooted in Christ, grounded in faith based on Psalm 1 verse number 3? Any first time visitors? Okay, since we are all family, on behalf of the dynamic duo that we have here, <laughs> Pastor Will and Lydia Kenlaw, on behalf of our ministerial staff and our officers and our members, we want to welcome you inside the sanctuary and on our virtual uh, worship experience on our platforms. We welcome you and we pray that the love that you experience here, that we will take it out into the streets, into our homes, onto our jobs, so that other people may know that God is real and that God loves them and that he wants them to come be a part of his plan to save men, women, and children, and boys and girls. Amen? Amen. So since we are all family this morning, we have a good, I'm going to say, five minutes for us to meet. <laughs> meet and greet. I stand up and meet and greet. And then use only five minutes of your time to meet and greet. And show some love this morning. Amen? Because God is love. Oh, I said five. I didn't say eighteen. Oh, do what your mother used to do. You know, your mother used to do. You got five minutes in the store. Hurry up, get what you want now. She was like, three. I'm <laughs> 
Fellowship Hall, come and get your spiritual nourishment and strengthening. Pastor's Bible study is this coming Wednesday, April the 17th at 7 p.m. The April health focus is stress awareness. Your health is your wealth. Get screened and follow medical advice. Exercise and eat healthy foods. Join Oak Street's daily morning prayer call every day at 7 a.m. and also our midweek meditation at noon on every Wednesday by using the prayer line. This is a reminder that all church members are asked to please make a $10 missionary offering monthly. Our upcoming meetings are as follows. The official board will meet on Saturday, April the 20th at 10 a.m. The store board will meet on set Saturday, May the 4th at 7 a.m. The trustee board will meet Saturday, May 11th at 10 a.m. And all of these are being soon. Seven. It's day seven. I don't know if it's wrong, but it's day seven. The school board will meet on Saturday, May the 4th at 7 a.m. 9 a.m. Oh, it's day seven. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Oh, what time do we meet? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Y'all meeting. That's all I know. The women's ministry will meet on Saturday. It's a typo. It's a typo. The women's ministry will meet on Saturday, April the 27th at 10 a.m. And that is also via Zoom. The men's ministry will serve at the Franciscan Center on Saturday, April the 27th at 9 a.m. Meet at the church first at 8.30 a.m. This is a new date. Um, oh, the new date for the men's ministry lunch is to be determined. Our Palm Sunday door hanger outreach to 300 homes has been rescheduled to Saturday, May the 4th at noon. The lay organization is seeking a new president, and all members are asked to renew your membership for the new conference year. Please add $10 to your offering and specify if it's for lay membership. The transportation ministry needs a new driver to assist with Sunday pickup. Please see Sister Deborah Johnson or Brother Cheryl Hayes if you're interested. Invite someone to church each week to um, church service. We are all under the Great Commission to share the gospel message of salvation with the unsaved. Please share the good news. Jesus loves all and wants to spend eternity with you. Presiding Elder Calhoun is challenging all members for each one to reach one in 2024. Use and get your new evangelism cards to invite family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and strangers to our services and Bible studies. The ushers have 10 church invitation cards for each member. Thank you. Amen. 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 We will be led from in worship by Brother Eric. He will be calling for an offering of appeal. Amen. Amen. We got Brother Calvin and Brother Eric working double duty. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the time that we offer the fifty days of the time. Our offering is tied and tied. Please take your check for money order payable to the Creative Church. Um, care of uh, Tracy Hawkins is the address 123 West 24th Street, um, Baltimore, Maryland 21218. Um, Tithing is very important. We've gotten a lot of things going on with um, the building up the church. We're remodeling up the church. The trustees have a lot of to be working on. And with our tithing, this will help in that endeavor. We will not turn it over to the usher. Uh, sure. Good morning, church. We will be using the out of the basket. Out of Alex, go back to our seats. Everyone stand. <laughs> Thank you. 
Scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's, it's time for our altar call. The altar is open for those of you who would like to come to the altar and that those would like to have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about what you've been through this week or what you went through this morning just to get here. I'm going to ask if Brother Calvin will come back for the second time to lead us in uh, the prayer of supplication. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he needs prayer. He needs prayer. We all need prayer. Father well, got to come back to you again. Oh, you come oh, okay. God, just, just thank you for all you do in our lives. Father God, we need you in our lives. I know, I know I wouldn't know what to do without you. Because Father God, I fall down short each and every day. Yes, Lord. So Father God, I pick myself up, dust myself off, and, and, and try and do it right the next time. So it won't happen again. So Father God, I ask you to be with us and help us in all we do. And hope you need me to. Father God, I ask you to go into the hospitals, into the jails, and all those places where you're needed. Help those people to understand what you can do for them. If they just get on their knees and ask for your help. Father God, I just, I just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father God, I've been going through a whole lot over the last couple of weeks. But Father God, you can <coughs> even through the trying times. Because Father God, all I got to do is ask on you, and you'll be there to help me out when it comes down. So Father God, I ask you to be with all the congregation. You know what they need. You know what they need of. So help them. Put an arm of protection around them, a hedge of protection to help them out to make sure things will go right in their lives. Father God, we ask this in your holy, most holy name. Thank you. 
He's good. <laughs> yes, he <is>. he... <laughs> the word has gone forth. Amen. 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 And you folks are moving at remarkable speed this morning for this service. You would think there was a Ravens game or something going on. Amen. It's old game. It's old game. Amen. Amen. Springtime. Somebody say springtime. Well, we give God the praise, the honor, and glory. We are so happy to see your smiling faces in the place. So many people have been out uh, with sickness and hospitalizations and all kinds of uh, medical treatments and whatnot, but God is still in the healing business. Amen? He is still in the healing business as evidenced by your presence in the room today. Give God a hand praise. Amen? God is good all the time. Praise the Lord, somebody. First, give an honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. We thank Jehovah God for the opportunity to stand behind this holy desk on today to bring a word, amen, on behalf of our officers and members. We greet our friends and guests as well in the joy of Jesus. For those who are online who are watching us today and those who will be watching throughout this week, because we do have people who watch throughout the week, usually between 60, 80, sometimes 100 folks. We give God the glory for you for tuning in and for hanging in there with us. Amen. Amen. And to my heartbeat, my soulmates, Amen. the love of my life, my wife for life. Amen. Pastor Lydia, I love you. Thank you for all that you do, amen, as our associate pastor. And let's give up a hand praise to our worship leader today who's so happy to be back, amen. 
He was preaching over at uh, St. Philip. Amen. He was preaching over at St. Philip's Lutheran last last week. So uh, we're glad to have him back. It's preaching time. Yeah. It's preaching time. Please open the greatest, most powerful weapon ever created, the Word of God. Turn with me to the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 3. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 3. When you find that, please stand as we honor God's Word. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held onto Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed over him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man who you see and know was made strong. It is in Jesus' name that the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you all can see. The somatic thought for this morning is people need hope. I said people need hope. And our theme this conference year, we are offering hope to the people. So somebody write that down as we prepare to pray. People need hope. With all heads bowed, all eyes closed, all hearts open to God, let us pray. (laughs) Father, I love you and you love me. Today we ask that you indeed love these people through me. I surrender all to you that you might Increase as I decrease. I repent of all my sins right now, past, present, and future. Holy Spirit, true preacher, come. Fill me up that I might preach your word. You touch these people. You touch these people. You touch these people in a mighty way. Fall fresh. Baptize each of us, oh God. We need salvation. We need sanctification. We need that fire baptism and Holy Ghost filling in our lives. So pour out, God, your Shekinah glory upon us. Let no one leave the same way they came to this service. Let each person know your touch. Reach out, God, with your spiritual hand. Squeeze our hearts. Heal somebody today. Save somebody today. Deliver somebody today. Inspire someone to join your church today. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. Amen. If you hadn't noticed, the banner that you see on the screen is also the banner that we have on the Howard Street fence. Well, we are offering hope to the community. Somebody say hope. hope. Last month, 64 teams entered and women's NCAA basketball. But there was only one winner within each group. 
Each team came to the tournament with the hope of a national championship. On the men's side, no one gave much thought or chance to the defending champion, <laughs> University of Connecticut. Our attention was directed elsewhere to more exciting teams like Purdue with their seven foot tall giant center. Like flashier teams like Gonzaga who can shoot the ball from anywhere on the court. Teams with highly paid coaches and all-star high school recruits like North Carolina and Kentucky. And on the women's side, there was even more excitement. The defending champion, Louisiana State University, was talking much smack. Two of their players are the highest paid in women's college basketball. That's right, they get paid now. They get paid through endorsement deals. Last year's runner-up, the University of Iowa, now has the highest scoring player ever in college basketball history and the highest scoring player this year. And with five seniors who have played together over 135 games together, they were on a mission to win their school's first national championship. And then there was this undefeated South Carolina team. <laughs> Rebuilt with a bunch of cocky freshmen, or should I say fresh women, who sometimes wouldn't even answer their coaches' text messages. And for the first time in history, more people watched the women's championship game than the men's game. And the women did not disappoint. It was a back and forth game until the last five minutes. In fact, Iowa had a 13 point lead in the first half and South Carolina had a 12 point lead in the second half, but South Carolina had something that Iowa did not have. They had a strong bench. Although young, inexperienced, underclass women, their coach had taught them that teamwork was a dream work. She should know she became an all-star in college and in the professional ranks, although only standing five feet six inches tall. She even led the U.S. Olympic team to the gold medal. And praise God, during her interviews, she talked about praying to God during the season and during the tournament. You see, she had hope that this team of zillennials or Generation Z folks could actually pull this thing off, and they did. They outlasted the Iowa team because their bench scored 45 points and gave their starters much needed rest during the championship game. Iowa's bench did not score one point, and its five senior starters grew weary and missed critical, crucial shots and free throws as the game came to a close. So what's the moral of the story? In this life, you need to have faith, hope, and a strong bench. A strong bench means teammates who love and trust one another. How many know I'm talking about Oak Street also? Jesus had all three. Jesus had faith in his father's plan. Jesus had hope that his disciples would embrace and use what he taught them for three years. And Jesus had a bench. His 12 disciples became 120, then 1,200, then 12,000, then 12 million, and even today, almost 3 billion disciples. You see, we are that bench. Tell your neighbor, we are the bench. And love compels us to continue the work of Jesus, love for Jesus, love for God, and love for our neighbor, our, our brothers, our sisters here in Baltimore, and tell your neighbor, you, you and I are part of Bent Street. Come on, tell them. You and I are part of Jesus' Bent Street. Point number one today is to talk about this thing called hope. But we want everybody to understand this thing called hope. The Webster Dictionary defines hope as a feeling that what is wanted will happen. What is wanted will happen. Does that, does that sound like a scripture to anybody today? 
You got it. Now, the faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not even seen. It also defines it as a person or a thing on which we may base our hope. The scriptures say, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. The New Revised Edition of Webster defines hope as something we earnestly wish for or anticipate. You see, hungry people wish for food. Homeless people wish for housing. Addicts wish for deliverance. Poor people wish for riches or at least enough to live comfortably. What do you wish for? Come on, people. What do you wish for? What do you anticipate for? What do you expect when you come to service today? Were you anticipating something? Were you expecting something? Were you expecting God to show up? Were you anticipating a healing? Were you anticipating a deliverance? Were you anticipating in yeah. Or were you thinking forward about a buffet meal, a nicer home, deliverance from some of your ills, riches, peace on earth, or were you thinking of Jesus' return? You see, more than half the world does not know him. In fact, Satan has provided every kind of distraction over these past 30 years to ensure that new generations do not know Jesus. He has taken prayer out of our schools. Parents no longer require children to attend church because they don't attend church. Are you hearing me today? We now have two generations of unchurched people walking our streets, sitting in our classrooms. The teachers in our congregation will be the first ones to witness that to you. Two generations. We have nearly a thousand television channels, and most of them broadcast violence, hate, greed, and sexual misconduct in all of its forms. And we wonder why elementary, middle school, and high school children are carrying guns and killing each other and trying to kill us. We wonder why 12 and 13-year-olds are carjacking automobiles for joy rides and quick money. We wonder why guns and drugs have flooded our streets and neighborhoods. We wonder why life itself has become so cheap to so many. And it's because they have no hope. No hope. Are you hearing me today, church? Yeah. But Christian folks, we have a hope. I said we have a hope. And we need to share that hope with a dying world that is around us. We need to share that hope with those who don't know. That's why hope is our theme this conference year. The world around us desperately needs to know there is hope. There is hope in Christ Jesus. You see, when you have hope in Christ, you can tell your problems about your God. Are you hearing me today, church? Y'all didn't get that. You don't need to tell God about your problems. You need to tell your problems about your God. Are you hearing me today, church? I said you need to tell your problems about your God. Don't tell God about your problems. Tell tell your problems about your God. And you need to tell those around you to take that same approach to life. Don't get it twisted. Tell them, say, tell your problems about your God. And if you don't have a God, let me introduce you to one. Let me introduce you to the only one. Where does hope actually come from. Where bread of life, the truth and the life. Our hope comes from the Lord. He is our hope and he is our shield. He is our very present help in a time of need. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come on, somebody. In God, I trust and am not a man do to me. That's what the scripture says. Somebody shout amen. amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Come on, somebody. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. For we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. Are you hearing me today, church? If I be for us, who can be against us? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to write it down. It gets, and guess what? It gets greater later. I said it gets greater later. God, God is not through with us yet. So I'm telling you, it, it gets greater later. Somebody write that down. Somebody can live on that word right there all this week. Somebody can live on that word right there all this month. Somebody can live on that word all this year. If you write it down and put it in your spirit, it gets greater later. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to somebody today. Is that you? Last point today is that our hope, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. I dare not touch the street of swing, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. I said on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. His own... His covenant, his blood support me yeah. in the whelming flood. Yeah. Anybody got some floods in their life today? Yeah. When all around my soul gives yeah. way, he then is all my hope and stay. Yeah. On Christ, I said on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I said all other ground is sinking sand. What about you today, church? When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Come on, somebody. Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ? I said on Christ. Well, somebody needs to stand on Christ today. Somebody needs to stand on Christ today. Can you stand up for Christ today? Can you show your faith today? All of the ground. I said all of the ground. I said, all of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord today. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord today. He's worthy. I said, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. A five-time cancer survivor wrote this. A five-time cancer survivor wrote this. I said a five-time cancer survivor wrote this. When you hear the hard news, there are two diverging roads from which to choose. One is despair, but don't go there. The other is hope. Go there. Go there. Though it's dark and there is fear, light will dawn and soon the way will be clear. Look above, for in God's love, there is hope. I said there is hope. There is hope. Somebody tell your neighbor there is hope. So beloved, I just stopped by to tell somebody today, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Even if you're in the hospital room, the king of glory shall come in. Even if you're in the nursing home, the king of glory shall come in. Even if you're in a bedridden state, the king of glory shall come in. Oh, somebody hear me today. Somebody needs this word today. Somebody needs to know that God will show up in your room. God will show up in your situation. God will show up in your circumstance. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Even, even the book of Lamentations, even the book of Lamentations gives us hope. Lamentations says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. 
His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we've been born again into a living hope. Tell your neighbor a living hope. Tell your other neighbor a living hope. Into an inheritance that can never perish, can never spoil, and can never fade. When we have hope in Jesus, there is certainty in our future. I said certainty, folks. I said certainty. You see, some people are going to and fro looking for things in all the wrong places. But God has sent Jesus that we might have certainty of our future. He has given him to us to give us a future and to give us a hope. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody put your hands together. Amen. Put your hands together today. Amen. As you stand all over the church with me one more time. For Jesus came not to condemn this world, but to save this world. He is the truth. He is the light. No one comes to the Father, the Father, except through him, the Son. He was wounded for us, for all of our sins, for all of our foolishness, for all of our transgressions. Why don't you bow your head with me as we think about what God has done for us. By his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Somebody needs a healing today. By his stripes. We are healed. Somebody needs that healing today. Somebody needs that miracle today. Somebody needs that deliverance today. I said, by his stripes, by his stripes, beloved, we are healed. He is the first. He is the last. He is our beginning. He is our end. He always was. He always is. He always will be. But by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. God, we love you today. God, we magnify you today. God, we glorify you today. God, whatever the point of need is in your beloved today, whether they're in the sanctuary or they are online, God, you know what their need is. God, we ask that you meet each and every one of us at our point of need. And God, when you do that, we will indeed always give you the praise, always give you the honor, always give you the glory. So release your Shekinah glory right now. Release your signs and your wonders right now. Release your miracles right now. Release your healing power right now in Jesus' name. All God's people shouted amen, amen, and amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. As our stewards get in position right now, we want to give each and every one of you in the house and each and every one online the opportunity to give your life to Christ if you have never done so, if you don't remember doing so, if someone told you you did, but you have no recollection whatsoever, this invitation is for you. It is for you. Just repeat after me this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sins right now. I believe in Jesus as my Lord my Savior and my God. And I accept him right now. Enter my life. Fill me with your spirit and direct my path from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand praise. If you prayed that prayer with me, whether you're in the building or online, congratulations and welcome into the kingdom of God and the ark of safety. We and the angels of heaven are rejoicing with you on today. We invite you to join this church, this body of Christ, or find a Bible-believing church near you. This is just the first step in a lifelong journey with Christ. This is just the first step in your walk with God until that great getting up morning. Please send us an email, send us a text. Just let us know you've accepted Christ, you've rededicated your faith in Christ, or that you want to join this body of Christ. We're going to turn the service now back over to our illustrious worship leader and the Oaks of Righteousness. Give God one more hand praise. Come on, give God one more hand praise. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you today. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Thank God for the word. 
that the Holy Spirit used Pastor Will today and people need hope. So we got some more hope that we can take with us from this word and from this worship experience and that we can take it and it can last us until next Sunday and we can spread that hope and tell our co-worker. And we can call one of our family members who may not be connected to the Lord or may have lost their little way. And we can share some of that hope that we got here today. We can share it with them. Amen. Amen. And we can share it with even the people that live in our house. Because you know what? Everybody needs hope. And everybody needs some encouragement. Amen. Amen. Let's just thank God. Let's just thank God for that word today. Uh, We've come to the place where it's time to recite our affirmation of faith. The Apostles' Creed. Amen. Amen. So if everyone would please stand. And if my little man could come back up here. Kyrie, Kyrie if you come on back up here with me. Uh, and and come on. Huh? Oh, you want to come up here too? Come on. No. <laughs> oh, now you're giving it up to young people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay y'all ready the apostles creed one two three let's go i believe in god the father almighty the maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried on the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and said on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give my hand for the bread. Good job. Good job. Thank you, sweetie. Good job, good job. Come on, let's give my hand clap of praise. All right, all right. Amen. We will now turn the service back over to Pastor Will's capable pastoring hands, and we will have the healing prayer and our benediction. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. When you see these young people, you see the future leaders of this church. And so we are always excited to see them get excited about coming up here to do what we are instructing them to do. Amen. The, the little fella came up about a half hour ago because he wanted he wanted to get up ahead of time. He wanted, he wanted to get a couple of times up here, amen? And Sister Sharon was telling us that Kyrie is more excited about coming to church than she is about coming to school. That means we're doing something right. Are you hearing me today? If you had been at the youth night, you would have seen God's movement among the young people. God is raising up a new generation. It ain't over for our young people. They ain't all lost. We just got to get more. We just got to get more and more of them into the church, into understanding what this life thing is all about and not be consumed by the consumerism and the materialism and the media. We got to introduce them to the living God and let the living God work on them. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Give our young people one more hand praise. Amen. Woo! Yeah. To God be the glory. We thank Sister Keisha for all that she does. Amen. Working with them. Amen. We thank those parents for all that they do working for, with them. It's healing prayer time. I said it's healing prayer time. So if you believe God for more in 2024, why don't you stretch forth one of your hands in faith, your sign of faith to God, to a living God, and receive, before we receive the prayer, 
of healing, we ask that we surrender to God a cleansing prayer so that we rid ourselves of any hindrances that may prevent our healings to come forth. Repeat after me. Lord God, I repent. Turn away and ask forgiveness of all sin in my life. And I cover them with the blood of Jesus. No longer see my sin, but only the righteous road of Jesus Christ. All right, beloved, whatever your need is, state it right now. Say it out loud so the devil flees from you and God hears your need. Whatever it is, nothing's too hard for God. Cancer, diabetes, obesity, gluttony, high blood pressure, heart disease, depression, anxiety. Whatever it is, say it. Say it and receive this simple prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, God in the flesh, his Hebrew name, Yeshua, be thou healed of that infirmity. Be thou healed of that disease. Be thou healed of that affliction. So let it be written. So let it be done. In Jesus' name, all God's people shouted amen, 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 and amen. Give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let him know we believe and stand on his word. We believe and stand on his word. And if you're ready for the benediction, why don't you raise both hands as a sign of surrender to God. need hope. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace today, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all God's people sing. Young people in Paris, please bring your report cards next week. Bring your report cards next week. We, will have a, we want to bless you. We want to bless you.
<laughs> you blow it in it like that. <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, like God. <laughs> Whatever it is that I want to. I don't. It don't. It don't. It don't, it don't, it don't because. That's what I'm 